Well, first off, Oscar, thank you for coming out to AIS headquarters today. Oh, thank you Sounds for Sounds like you've had a pretty busy, busy time getting here, but I, we appreciate you coming out. And on the front side, we quizzed our staff and saying, hey, do you have any questions you would like Oscar to ask? So these questions come in from our staff members, first and foremost. But okay. first, I need to introduce you formally for the, some people who do not know who you are. Mm -hmm. um, so Oscar Sanchez was previously the executive VP of Kyocera Document Solutions Europe. Uh, he began his career at Kyocera in 1996, and by 2002 had risen to general manager of Kyocera Document Solutions Spain, delivering the highest revenue in the company's history and increasing profits over 1,000%. Oscar then took on additional responsibility for business development throughout Europe, eventually relocating to the Netherlands to head both the corporate sales division and marketing division as executive VP of Kyocera Document Solutions Europe. He earned an international MBA in marketing and at uh, IE during time, which he spent the final semester studying at UCLA, Anderson School of Management. Sounds like you're an underachiever, Oscar. <laughs> That's the best you could do in all that amount of time? Uh, yeah, I tried. Right. <laughs> Is there anything to add to that, or that pretty much covered no, fairly well? Probably that I have been very lucky to be in a company that has been giving me opportunities to grow and to develop myself. I think nowadays when we talk so often about the great resignation and, right. and people moving from one, company to, from, com from one company to another, I think sometimes people doesn't have the patience to, to really find a place that you can develop and grow and uh, maybe not so much into looking into certain gains. And I think Kyocera for me has been an excellent company that has given me opportunities. So. Great. First question that we have. Outside of supply chain issues, what are the biggest challenges manufacturers face over the next three years? How long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think right now we have a lot of challenges going on. Of course, uh, the declining printing volumes after COVID is one of them. Uh, the increase of production costs, of uh, freight costs, uh, um, the impact of uh, M&As uh, in, in the industry, uh, the impact of uh, new channels like e-commerce. So I think there are many things that are going on in our industry right now that, well, it uh, makes a very challenging time for sure. Got it. And so if you looked at who you think your biggest competitors are, inside, inside our industry, who would that be? And outside our industry, who would that be? Well, I'd say inside of our industry, I, we don't have a, a one particular biggest competitor. I think all the big six or, uh, out of uh, Kyocera, the big five, Canon, Xerox, Konica, I mean, Ultra Recon, and Sharp, Toshiba, they are really you know, equally good competitors. They are all great companies with great products, so, mm -hmm. so they're a tough competition. Out of our industry, I guess that right now anyone who is trying to uh, digitalize a printed document, it's our competition. I mean, uh, companies that... Uh, uh, sell document management software, backfile conversion, even uh, um, IT services companies, because at the end they are offering part of the solutions that we may be offering. So since they are our competition, we need to be ready to compete in that space as well. Got it. What excites you most about when you look at the current state of the office, office technology industry? Well, I would say that we have gone through so very difficult times in the last couple of years uh, that really was impacting so much the industry that I think that uh, now everybody has understood that change is not an option. Uh, you have to be open for change. And I think during many years this industry that has been very successful, when you were trying to talk to dealers or other players about you know, changing, maybe the answer was change why. And I think now that answer is very clear. I mean, you need to change because the industry is transforming. So I think that's very exciting. Uh, I'd like change, and I think that the situation we're going through right now, it's, uh, it's very exciting for me. Well, yeah, if you like change, this is a good time This is the moment, this is the moment. Now, I read a news release uh, over the weekend of a new VP of IT added to, to uh, Kyocera, uh, John Arsberger, is that right. correct? Yeah. Uh, is this a new role for Kyocera? And can you talk about what and why this role? Well, it's not a new role for Kyocera because he's the VP of IT, of an internal IT, so he's the one providing technology for the company. Uh, it's not a new role, but it's a very important role because, well, we are going through a major corporate transformation and technology is a very important piece of that, of that, uh, of that uh, transformation. In parallel, in April also, we, we hire a new, a new VP of uh, IT services, Manage IT, that that's a new role for Kyocera. And of course, we want to get more and more into managed IT services, and that's why we needed to have that position. So, so that's the external piece. So, yeah, that's the so external piece. So John's piece. The, the internal? John is the internal uh, IT piece, and then Joe Fucillo, uh, who joined the company in April 1st, he's the external part. Got it. So since joining uh, Kyocera Document Solutions America, what has been your biggest challenge? 
Well, I think that uh, I came in a difficult moment because there has been many things going on at the same time that uh, we're trying to transform the company. I think Kiyosera was a great organization, but probably an organization that didn't change much in the last 20 years. So that means that all of our technology, all our processes, the development programs for our people were not there. So I think the biggest challenge is to try to provide short-term results at the same time that we're transforming the organization. And that's always a challenge because I don't like to, to work thinking on the short term, but you always have that pressure. And uh, well, the transformation that we're going through is a big one. So I think that was really for me the biggest challenge. Well, certainly I know putting together a, a new executive management team because we've kind of done something similar here is quite challenging. And I'd say, you know, congratulations because I think the team that you put together is quite, quite outstanding. So well, thank kudos you to you on I that. Appreciate it. Uh, what advice would you give to independent dealers? What do you think maybe we're missing that uh, we need to hear? Well, I think that uh, right now it's a moment that, as we said before, everybody's looking for answers. There are so many questions out there. And I think the problem of this industry quite often is that we are too self-centric. We look too much uh, inside the industry to look for those answers. And in my opinion, I think that this is a moment that you have to look outside. I think that you have to look outside of the industry and many things that are happening out there will affect us one way or the other. Uh, we can talk about e-commerce, we can talk about subscription services, we can talk about the move uh, from uh, customer service to customer experience. I think what is happening right now, for instance, in the retail industry is fascinating, how they are integrating the physical customer journey and the digital customer journey. So you buy a product online, but then if you want to return it, you can return it in a traditional uh, brick and mortar store. And then when you go there, before you leave the store, you get an email with a voucher that you can spend in the uh, next hour in the same physical store. So all that integration of digital and online and offline, I think is fascinating. And that will come uh, to our industry sooner or later. And I think that we're a little bit slow in this industry to understand that uh, we are not special. Mm -hmm. We are just one more industry and whatever we see out there will happen sooner or later here. What makes you think that we're so reluctant? To, to because we have been very change. successful. I think that when an industry uh, uh, is successful, then you tend to think that why do you need to, to do something different if what I'm doing is working? Mm -hmm. And that's true at, uh, at to, up to a certain extent, but I think that the most successful dealers, and I think AIS is a good example of that, are always thinking ahead. Even if you are being successful, you want to do more, you want to do differently. And I think that that's what in this industry we don't see so much, I would say. I know that you also like to read books. Um, can you give us a few books that you recommend to our, our staff members that you think would be good for them to read? Well, uh, <laughs> I like to be uh, um, kind of uh, loyal to my origins. I would say probably the masterpiece of uh, Spanish literature, which is El Quixote. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's something that uh, well, probably everybody should read. Um, also looking into my background, uh, when I moved uh, to, to Amsterdam, I was working in Europe, I was responsible for 64 countries. So I read a book that was fascinating, that it, uh, the name was uh, Mind Your Manners, uh, that explains the way of doing business in different nationalities, not only in Europe, but also here in the US, because well, it's different to do business uh, depending on the nationality you are dealing with. So that was uh, also very, very good. And again, I like change, and for me, the, the best book that explains what change means is uh, uh, Who Says That uh, elephant, uh, Elephants Can Dance by Lou Gessner. He was the former president of IBM when IBM was a hardware company. And then he transformed, he came from, I think, uh, American Express and PepsiCo into IBM. So crazy appointment. And then he transformed IBM from a hardware company, very kind of old fashioned, I would say, into a services, uh, services organization. And that was made by Lou Gessner. And the book is fascinating because he explains that journey and how resistant uh, that organization was to change and how he did it. Uh, so that book, for me, it's a really good book to, to understand change. That's, all, that's one I have not read, so I definitely that's pick really that good. one up. I'd really recommend okay, it. Okay, we'll do one final question, one, a little bit of a fun one. What one thing people want? What's one thing that people are generally surprised to find out about you? Well, I'm a boring person, so there are not so many <laughs> uh, interesting things to find out about me. But probably I've been, as I said before, 26 years working in the company. So I, quite often when I talk to people, they think that this is all I have done in my life. I was born in this company. And it is true, this is, has been a big part of my professional life. But I have a life before that. And what I have done has been a little bit all over the place. I spent one year in the military service because when I was young, the military service was mandatory in Spain. So I spent one year in the mandatory, mandatory uh, military service. 
I was working one year in a law firm in San Antonio, Texas, when I finished out of law school. And right before I joined Kiyosera, I was working in IBM. So I was a little bit all over the place until I found my place in, in Kiyosera. So probably that would be the only kind of surprising thing about me. What, what was the military uh, journey that you Air had? Force. Air Force. Yeah, I was and what did you Force. get to do there? I was, uh, uh, you have to be for five months in the training camp. So that's a kind of a training camp. But then at that time I was uh, in law school. So I had to enter at law school for one year. So I was appointed to the Supreme Court of Justice. Uh, so it was really, nice. really fascinating. But I would say when I'm here in the US and I talk about the Air Force, people think about Tom Cruise and, uh, and Top, uh, uh, yeah, Tom Cruise in Top, Top Gun. Top Gun right. But uh, unfortunately, that's not yeah. so exciting. That's so. what I get all the t time too. People tell me I look just like Tom Cruise. They, they <laughs> yes, confuse okay. me. So I get it. I, I understand. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar, for coming out here today. Thank you very much, Gary. Thank great you very much. Great seeing you as always. My pleasure. And, and uh, safe travels. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Gary. Thank you.